Harry losing royal role as final nail in the coffin of his title after Queen confirmed very sad news. The Queen could take formal action and strip Prince Harry of his final royal role due to him living in the US with his wife Meghan Markle and children Archie and Lilibet. Prince Harry might lose his last royal role according to experts. Harry and wife Meghan Markle left their royal titles in the UK to live their life in the US with their family in 2020. Now the former prince is facing the loss of his final royal role according. In 1937 the Queen's father King George VI created the Regency Act which decided the councillors of states in their current model. The members are the monarch's spouse and the four most senior members of the royal family over the age of 21, which means Prince Charles, Prince William, Prince Harry and Prince Andrew are among the four. However, there are questions whether Harry is eligible due to living in the US now. All of these decisions, the military titles, the HRH is in abeyance, could theoretically be reversed. However, having Parliament take formal action to remove them as councillors of state is in another league entirely. If the Queen does take steps to have this situation remedied and Harry is axed, there really is no going back, said a source. After Harry's exit he is not suddenly likely to drop everything and come back to his British life and royal duties. However, whatever you might think about his choices over the last 24 months, for more than 15 years he well and truly did his bit for the Queen and country including serving two tours on the front line in Afghanistan, helping significantly change the conversation about mental health and founding the Invictus Games. Being removed, by Parliament no less, as a councillor of state would really be the nail in Harry's coffin of his former life as a frontline member of the royal family. Royal co luminist Victoria Arbiter has said that the stoicism shown by Her Majesty's personal loss should be an example to the nation. Ms. Arbiter reflected on her own recent loss of her friend Maria last month and reflected that grief is an undeniable leveler irrespective of social status. However, Mr. Rabbit pointed out that the Queen explained the pain and inevitability of grief better than most. Writing for Australian Outlet, she wrote, An undeniable leveller, raw unadulterated grief eventually comes for us all. It is, as the Queen wisely said following the 9-11 terror attacks, the price we pay for love. Nonetheless, those fortunate to live a long and healthy life are often forced to contend with more than their fair share. Ms. Arbiter points out that the Queen has faced a number of sad goodbyes recently. This includes the Duchess of Grafton, her friend and mistress of the robes, and last month Lady Farnham, her long-time confidant and lady-in-waiting, who died aged 90. On January 5th, Her Majesty was hit by another blow when racing journalist and horse trainer Ivor Herbert, a close friend of the royals, died aged 96. Without doubt the death of her beloved husband Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, was the most bitter pill to swallow. This year will also include a number of sad anniversaries including 70 years since her father's death, 25 years since Diana died and the 20th anniversary of her sister Princess Margaret passing away. As Ms. Arbiter argues the Queen has put aside her own grief and sorrow for the good of the nation to set an example to all of us. She wrote, the Queen has endured a steady stream of sorrow and yet, true to form, she's put her own pain aside so as to focus on the welfare of others. In doing so, she's set an exceptional example to us all. She continued, stoic and steadfast, even in the face of personal adversity. The Queen has consistently prioritized the needs of the nation. The epitome of the wartime generation, she represents an unwavering symbol of fortitude and her unifying presence is one to be admired. True to form, she's put her own pain aside so as to focus on the welfare of others.